Um, hi, everybody. Yeah, I didn't see the word live pop up because we haven't been live in a while. And this is Believe in the Dallas Cowboys. And they sent me a new background to use. And you use it on this platform that I'm on right now, but I couldn't figure it out. But we're here. And I didn't see that we were live. Hi, everybody. I'm Jeff. And he's former Cowboys wide receiver, Jesse Holly. Oh, Jesse Holly went 77 yards. It must be a reality show. And Jesse, the people are demanding you be held accountable. Yeah, I know. They're being de they're, they're demanding. You're held accountable <laughs> for your prediction. See, I predicted, I knew that the Cowboys were going to beat them by 100. That's why I picked them to win 24 to 23. Mm -hmm. But you, you are a hater. No, I, I stand here and I was wrong. I was wrong. Boy, was I wrong. Everything that I thought that was possible did not happen for Tampa Bay. None of it. None of it. Vita Vea wasn't as dominant. Devin White and Levante David wasn't as dominant. Uh, Tom Brady was looked old, looked uh, disheveled, looked, um, looked, looked, looked flustered throughout multiple points in that game. Um, and it was bad. It was bad. And uh, kudos to Kellen Moore. Kudos to Dak Prescott playing one of the best games of his career. Kudos to Dan Quinn for changing up the scheme and, and giving them different looks. It was – it was. if you just take out Brett Maher, like that was one of – like that was one of the first games where I saw this team offensively and defensively play so well from start to finish all year long. They've had moments where one side has really dominated, the other side not so much, and vice versa. But but there were two dominating performances led by, led by, mind you, two of the most dominant players in their team. Had to be led by Micah Parsons, had to be led by Dak Prescott, and they both showed up and massively showed out in this football game. So I, I Jesse Holly, I apologize for 2004. I was listening to Ruben Stutter before I came over here. Like, this is what I'm sorry for 2004. And I ain't gonna earn no more this year. I don't know if I might hurt you anymore this year, but I am sorry. I was wrong. I like my crow um air fried. Oh, hell yeah. Please. Yeah, hell a little yeah. air fried, pull a little of that 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 Tony. Or that Tony, what's called? Whatever that Tony season. Oh, Tony Shasha Sharer, 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 we hadn't been live in a while because I now have a, cause somebody else asked, like, I feel like I haven't seen you a lot. Well, cause I got a job again. I agreed to do radio again. So you can hear me on 97, one, the freak and DFW from seven to 11 AM. And our station is live from 7 AM to 7 PM. So if Jesse and I do something at one or two or three o'clock, I don't want to go live up against my own employer. That is not smart. But if we do this at night, then I can hit the go live button. So shout out to formula who said party at Jeff's pool fund. Move Izzy to cornerback permanently. Oh, we will talk about Israel Mukwamu. Yeah. We will. But first, where'd my email go? I pay the bills. Y'all know what's happening. Um, our guys at Bet Online, your number one source for all your sports betting needs this season. Use the promo code Believe B L E A V, and you'll receive a fifty percent welcome bonus where you can bet the whole house on the cat. Don't bet your whole house. Be responsible. <laughs> But you could bet on the Cowboys playing against the seventh round rookie quarterback if you wanted to. But Bet Online is your continued source for all sports wagering information. They got live betting, free contests, giveaways all season long. All the sports they got you covered at Bet Online, where the game starts. Use a promo code Believe. Uh, Jeff, don't flex. Jesse, don't sing. That's true. I don't have any muscles, but I am wearing my Under Armour cold gear because <laughs> I, I had to play some volleyball earlier. Um, Andrew says we accept your apology, Jesse. Thank you. That's that's nice of him. Thank you. Uh, Rodney's watching on Facebook. He said Schultz came out like Jason Witten. Uh, yes, but let's go back to Formula's Super Chat because he's the one who is the reason that I can keep the lights on. Uh, we floated the idea. I think you and I talked about this when they couldn't find another corner that if you're real desperate, 
Israel Mukwamu played corner at South mm-hmm. Carolina, and then Dan Quinn picked him to be a safety, and they just reached the point where they were like, all right, none of you guys could play. Like, think about the last three weeks. The guys who they tried to get the opposite corner to be were Trayvon Mullen mm-hmm. and Nashawn Wright. And then they got to the postseason, and they were both inactive. That's that's how highly they thought of those two. And Dan Quinn just broke out the, Mukwamu's going to play the slot about half the game. <laughs> and son of a biscuit, if he didn't do it pretty well. He got away with penalty one time, but don't worry about that. Uh, they found a player that we floated the idea, but he just pulled it out of the bag. So shout out to Dan Quinn. I didn't know if they would do that or what we were going to see, but you got a little Xavier Rhodes. You got a little Mukwamu. You got a little Kelvin Joseph and they made it work probably because I didn't realize the Cowboys defensive front was going to give the Tampa offensive line that sort of hell, but they did. So shout out to everybody defensively. Yeah. And this is just another kind of tip of the cap to, uh, or feather in his cap to, to Dan Quinn. He's been, He's been pulling these strings all year long, you know, starting with the Micah Parsons going to defensive end full time and just being able to move guys around and give guys opportunities. And and to their credit, you know, look at a guy who's been a journeyman across this league and J. Ron Curse uh, has come in and, and found a home here in Dallas. He He's found a place now. Where he's solidified himself, I think, throughout this league as a bona fide starter, right? Not a guy who bounces around and plays special teams, but a guy who can play in that system. And it's always nice to be a guy like J. Ron Curse because your 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 defensive coordinator and the coaches underneath him will very soon take different jobs, right? So whether it's Joe Witt Jr., whether it's um uh Durden or whoever it is, Dan Al Harris. Quinn, Al Harris. And so what happens now is because of your leadership, because of the way you practice, because of the way you play, you're always going to have a job. Whether Dan Quinn goes, hey, I'm a head coach over here. J. Ron Curse is a free agent. Bring him over here. Al Harris, bring him over here. Uh, uh, Joe Witt Jr., bring him over here. So th- these are the type of plays that you want to make. And now I take a guy like Israel McQuamble, who is a Dan Quinn pick, six foot three, six foot four, rangy long. He's he's not he's not as stiff as a six foot four corner would be. He can move a little bit. He has some flexibility, you know. And now guys like that find themselves in the National Football League for a long time because that coaching tree now branches out. And coaches always want to bring guys in who know their system, who know how to come in and perform. And Israel McQuamble came in. I said it on Twitter. I said that that wasn't in my on my bingo board. I I, I didn't I didn't have Israel McQuamble coming in playing damn good football for the Cowboys, making some really good plays. His lip was the one time he almost jumped up and grabbed the interception from Tom Brady. I mean, that 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 type of stuff that you don't always take account for. So, you know, shout out to Dan Quinn. Shout out to Israel McQuamble for being ready when his moment was called. Because that's, that's a hell of a moment, right? Like, you don't really get snaps all year long. And then they go, hey, bro, um, so this week we're going out and play a divisional. Uh, we're going out and play in a wild card round against Tom Brady. And uh, you about ready to go? Yeah, sure. All right, we're giving you the go. Let's go. Let's just yeah. let's just go with it. Let's just go with it. And you know that it means something to be a player and step up in that moment. And Israel did that. So kudos to him and everyone else involved. Yeah, he got the talk from Dan where he's like, "Hey, I know you've been our fourth or fifth safety, and uh, you've been running down on kickoff. Are you ready to play nickel corner?" <laughs> and he's like, "Oh yeah, sure, no problem." Uh, got some super chess formula. So impressed with Dak and proud for him. Look at MG and TY making plays. Uh, yeah, Gallup had a third and six, I think, slant. TY had a third and eight that he converted. Jason, I remember when Mukwamu was drafted, when Jerry talked to him, he said, You got the best corner in the draft. Any reason we could think this would work as a permanent switch? Maybe I'm so scared of six foot four corners for a day. It worked, but I'm so scared of six foot four corners. I feel like when you go up against a five foot 11 receiver, you're about to be put in a freaking blender. Uh, but Quinn mixed it up. They mixed up who was playing and who was playing where, uh, I would love it. If it turned out that Izzy could be a starting NFL corner and then bland could play the slot, maybe even though McQuamo was playing the slot, we're going to figure it out as we go. Okay. Cause they ran out of bodies and we're going to keep figuring it out. Vance, in my Richard Sherman voice, don't you ever compare my QB <laughs> with average QBs like Cousins or Cars. Who's he talking to? I don't know. Wasn't me. Samuel, how will Dan Quinn stop the 21 personnel? 
Worried, haven't seen anyone slow that down. We're not going to San Francisco yet, Samuel. Damn it. We're not going to San Francisco yet. <laughs> San Francisco is a Thursday or Friday situation. <laughs> the answer to how you're going to slow it down is you are going to let the seventh round rookie quarterback make about two F ups, and they're going to have to come out of 21 personnel to try to score some points. That's the hope. Uh, but yeah, offensively, loved. Uh, that getting t- Tyler Biotish back, and we talked about this too, where for me it was sort of a hope where you're like, man, this offensive line hadn't been able to run block in three weeks. What in the hell is going on? Pass protection good. Run blocking, I would say okay. And Tony Pollard can make you right if you give him a chance. He'll make you right, which is why one of the running backs averaged five yards a carry and one of them averaged under three. But I don't want to do that today. <laughs> I don't want to do that today. But here's the thing. Tony Pollard is going to make you right more often than not when you don't run him between the tackles. When you don't run him in the A-gaps, right? Like When you get Tony Pollard on the edges and allow that zone run to kind of develop, 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 he has the speed, the agility to put that foot in the ground and get up the field right now. He's not lugging. He's not like... No, he's like... And he's going. Me, me. You know, and, and that's and that's what you have to have because these holes open up so quick. You know, the term for it when you're a running back is slow too fast through. And 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 the other running back for the Cowboys is slow too, slow through, slow some more. And that's that's no knock against him, but that's where he's at in his career. And for an offensive line who does not sustain blocks for a long period of time, you need for that guy that's running the football when that hole opens up. He needs to be through it and be through it right now. Hey, we, we, now. Not now, but damn it, right now. And that's what Tony Pollard gives you. And Kellen Moore, shout out to Kellen Moore. I think I thought he called a masterful game plan. He, 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 there was eight different receivers who got targeted. They took the profit right in front of them. They were throwing the ball right to the tight end and to the guys and the crossing routes. And they were sitting down over the ball and wasn't trying to force balls down the field. Like the profitable things that they should have been doing before and not trying to get home runs and knock out blows every single play were there before in the past. They just was overlooking them or, or calling four verts on third and seven, you know, stuff like that. But instead of doing that before, they were doing it the right way. And Tony Pollard helped that cause up front. And, and getting a guy like Tyler Biotis back, I think, settled the offensive line. Kind of got some guys back in their natural positions, and it settled it. And it allowed for it to flourish in a way that I didn't think it was going to flourish in that way. But it, it, it did enough. It wasn't a dominating run game, but it did enough to make you respect the run game. It did enough to keep the keep you a, a, a ahead of the chains. And when you were able, when you had to go and ice the game out, it, I mean, once the game was iced out for a long time, you were able to do so. Yeah, they iced it out when CD caught the touchdown. Yeah. With three or four minutes left in the third quarter. Antoine says, props to Jesse for being the only DFW media person to say I was wrong. Shout out to my fellow Jersey guy. Don't, 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 don't give Jesse props. No, I'm an honorable and admirable guy. I, when I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Oh, but I'm right, though. <laughs> oh, I <will>. another <laughs> another guy that is uh being mentioned a decent amount and it's two things that i think are 100 percent right that we're seeing in the chat whether you're on facebook youtube twitch what up everybody uh one yeah i agree with everybody who's talking about trayvon diggs he wasn't real interested in tackling people uh last night don't pay um, the tackle i'll tell you what come sunday at 5 30 he better be ready to tackle because San Francisco will make you tackle. Yeah. I promise. Uh, and the other one was, and we talked about this. We're, we're smart. We're smart. Leighton Van Der Esch coming back was huge. Leighton, like Anthony Barr and Damone Clark have struggles consistently doing all the things, shedding blocks, uh, getting it right in coverage. And Leighton Van Der Esch for all of his career arc, which has been really interesting, they needed him back. You know, it, people want to tell me that I'm wrong, and I'm totally fine with sitting here and eating crow. I really am. Shout out to my guy, J- uh, uh, Justin Hewitt from Hillside, New Jersey. Well, shout out to you guys, some other guy, Antoine from North New Jersey. <laughs> Whoever the other guy is that's saying that I was wrong all year, you're a liar. I was not wrong all year. I've been pretty right all year, and I'm not a hater, Eric Griffin. But, you know, here's the thing, Jeff Cavanaugh. What? We as media members, right, we, we, 
We have to come out and people want our opinions, our thoughts, our breakdowns, all of those things, right? And our words are publicly documented. And people let us know all the time. But you fans, oh, you fans. See, y'all get to say whatever you want. Y'all get to keep y'all little tidbits to yourself. And nobody accounts for those. But I am old enough to remember when a lot of you, a whole hell of a lot of you, wanted Leighton Van Der Esch gone. You didn't want him to get you didn't want him to get the one-year deal. You didn't want him to be a part of his football team. You wanted him so far gone from the Cowboys. Now you were so happy to get him back. And now all of a sudden there's this abundance of praise for Leighton Van Der Esch from some of you who you know who you are. You'll have to walk by the mirror tonight in the bathroom when you're taking your late night pee-pee and look yourself in the mirror and you know that you were the ones in the barbershop at the bar, in the garage, at the cookout, talking to your homies about, man, we need to get little Leighton Van Der Esch. He sucks. He's slow. He did it, did it, that. And all y'all did now was cheer him on. All I'm saying is be real with yourselves because a lot of y'all want to tell us that when we're wrong and when we're out of when we're out of pocket, but you don't you don't be honest with yourself. And I know a lot of you because you've been on my Twitter for the last couple of years telling me how we need to get rid of uh, uh, Leighton Van Der Esch, how we need to give guys like Damone Clark and Jabril Cox and other guys like that more opportunities. So don't you guys get on the LVE bandwagon now, you bastards. I do love that we uh, we have a couple of people in the chat who are like, that's me, <laughs> but <laughs> but owning it. That's important. <laughs> owning it. I, hell, I was one of them. Leighton, I mean, last year coming into the year, Leighton kind of looked fat, out of shape. <laughs> it's all weird. And now – Suddenly he's uh he's playing real well. And uh yes, yes, Dak was incredible. Shout out to Dak. Vance, Jesse should at least dine in style, so he should have some crow brulee. Ooh, I'll take it. Look at that. That'd be great. Jesse, it. somebody pointed out that Jesse does owe me a steak dinner still. I do. Just when Venmo I get, me when I get uh, back. Thir- Venmo me $13.99. I'll just go <laughs> scoop it up at Kroger. Mike. What kind of input do you guys think McCarthy has on the offensive game plan, hands off, or got more involved in this game? I don't know, but I know that's another dude that people need to – Quinn, Kellen, McCarthy, Dak. That's the head of the list of, man, we were all worried going into this game. I thought they were going to win the game, but I was worried going into that game. I didn't think they were going to piece it back together in that sort of a hurry. And, Jesse, you can speak to this better than I can because one of the things – about the Cowboys this year and over the last three years with Mike McCarthy is I think this happens to a lot of people. You have your defensive coordinator, you have your offensive coordinator. Kellen Moore calls the plays on offense. Dan Quinn calls the plays on defense. So people go, what does Mike McCarthy do? And he kind of looks like this gruff, kind of, you know, out of shape, kind of. And so, like, everybody just assumes that Mike McCarthy's stupid and doesn't do anything or doesn't know what he's doing. And I'm sitting here going, do you guys like winning 12 games a year or not? (laughs) So like, you might not know the day-to-day process of what he does, but the idea that McCarthy should be fired and they should be in the market for a head coach. I'm like, you were just a game away from having the buy and five games were started by Cooper Rush. So do I know on a day-to-day basis what McCarthy does? I don't, but everybody who thinks you can do so much better, all those different ways, you don't either. So like something he's doing is good. You know, it's, it's 50. It's like, it's like 30, 33, 33, 33. It's like 33.3, 33.3, 33.3. There's 33% of the people who look at Mike McCarthy and they didn't like it from the start, right? They, they didn't like the pick from the start. So everything that they do and you walk, you watch across these games in the playoffs, regular season, there are other coaches who have, you know, game management issues. It ain't just all Mike McCarthy. They, they all have it. We just so happen to watch this team more closely than we do everybody else. Then there's another third who are like, you know what? Mike's my guy that we're rolling with him. And then there's the other 33rd, uh, 33% that says the tantalizing name excites you. It's this, it's this thought process of, but if we had Sean Payton and, and honestly, those people, a lot of those people could not tell you what Sean Payton does that makes it so different from what Mike McCarthy does. I mean, besides if, now, there, if there's one there's one thing that I got upset about Mike McCarthy was I thought when he came in, he should have stuck to his guns and been the play caller. I thought he kind of, he kind of, you know, he might not have had that option. I know, I know, but I, I wanted him He's to like, push yes, back. I'll take that job. I want him to push back a little bit more 
you know, on that situation of saying, you know what, I've been doing this for a lot longer than the kid has. Go ahead, you know, we'll coach him up. We'll get him right. But let me let me be the guy who, who calls these plays. Um, but you're absolutely right. You talk about, you know, minus the COVID year, it's tough to win 12 games in the National Football League. It really is. And, and, and each and every year, you know, look across the league of these teams who are trading coaches in and out for, you know, every – two, three years, you, you lose that continuity. A new guy comes in, your, your draft class doesn't work anymore. He has a different thought philosophy. He has a different approach to guys. He has a different approach to what guys should look like. Long guys, short guys, tall guys, thick guys, fast guys, strong guys. So they, these are all the things. So now you want to have a little bit of, now I don't think you want to go down a, a road where you're saying, all right, we're going to do 10 years of Jason Garrett nonsense. But I do think you give a guy an opportunity to kind of get a draft class in here, get some guys into the system and let it flourish. Now, I do have a little bit of an issue when it comes to Kellen Moore because he he glitches far too much for me. And the biggest problem is, is that I think Dak is good enough to overcome some of the glitches that Kellen Moore may have. But when Dak's having a bad day and Kellen's having a bad day, you get commander football. Like that, you know what I'm saying? Like you, 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 you can't have them both glitch at the at the same time. One can only glitch at the same time. Like it has to be either Dak's glitching and Kellen Moore's getting him out of it. Or Kellen Moore's glitching and Dax getting them out of it, but I mean, for the most part, your two coordinate, your two coaches, really, your Dan Quinn and, and Mike McCarthy, those are two of the best in the business. And the Cowboys should be really, 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 really lucky to have them because you might be losing one of them very soon. Okay, speaking of losing people, oh, David said I was pissed about McCarthy lying about analytics. He doesn't lie. The Cowboys are an aggressive team. I think McCarthy absolutely knows the numbers and plays to it. And uh, David, you probably time. lied on a job application before too. You weren't yeah. qualified. You didn't no. have all the years of experience. No, he lied about watching all the plays. Yeah, which, he lied that, about you know, that. That's different. I mean, if you watched a bunch of them, you feel like you watched them all. I study the draft. You know how many games I watch from a player? Two to three until I feel like I got them. But if you were going to hire me, I bet, yeah, I saw all his plays because I'm still going to tell you what the player did. I got him. I'm good. <laughs> um, one other guy that I want to shout out is Tyler Smith going out there and playing left guard. Jason Peters got hurt. He slid out to left tackle, and he was able to play well at both of those positions. So salute to you, you badass. Good job. And I'm trying to think because I had one other one that I forgot. I mean, so many guys on defense. J. Ron Kirst played great. Kwamu, um, Diggs, Parsons, obviously. Uh, Tom Brady, Micah Parsons had, I forgot if it was eight or nine. nine. Those are the most pressures that any one player had put on Tom Brady in five years. No. And I don't remember who got credit for the sack between him and Dorrance Armstrong. Probably depends on what website you looked at. But Micah Parsons was in Tom Brady's kitchen. Uh, San Francisco's line is better than that. But I believe uh, that they gave Micah Parsons. They, they came back later on and gave Micah Parsons that sack. That's nice of them. Yeah. He deserved it. Damn he it. Does. You do enough work. You deserve it. Um, Did he look fresher to time? you, though? And He looks fresh to me. Like, Ooh, know, yeah, he looked. He, he didn't look this like he looked like he had a recharge. I think that Micah is like he's not one of us. No, and I think he got to the playoffs, and it's just like it. He he's the Wolverine. Like it doesn't matter what hurts. He's like, no, it's playoffs. I'm good. Like he, I don't know. I don't know because like, he was good all year. But you didn't see the same every play. Like, I'm going to rush the passer, beat the left tackle, and then you're going to throw a screen, I'm going to run that dude down. Like, it was, I'm still good at rushing the passer, but it wasn't quite the same, and he was a he was a terror again. That was badass. And I think all his body parts are hurt. At, at every play, it's something. Except, that, his, except his wee-wee. That works. That's a weird thing to say. Um, that, but that one yeah, works. Great. He's, he's, he's cranking them babies out over there, boy. Oh yeah, he just had another one. Yeah, good yeah, yeah. He's like twenty three. He's like it's like going kid three over there. Yeah, <laughs> he's he's, well, he's he's Tom Brady's daddy now yeah. too. <laughs> <laughs> he's like the lion boy. He he runs around that pack. He runs around that pack and lay that and lays it down. Easy, dude. I'm just saying. Easy. T T M I. And then, but somebody else said that's funny on the wee wee. Uh, anything before we get out of here, Jesse? Oh, Jesse, um, by the way, is out here saving the damn world. Where are you right now? What are you doing? Uh, I am in uh, Cartagena, Colombia. Uh, I'm on a missions trip. Uh, we do a medical, dental, um, and we do a mental uh, medical trip here uh, for the poor people in, uh, for the less fortunate people here in Cartagena. 
you know, you know how I am about charity. I, I give back in the States. I give back abroad. And this is also a place where I've started my sports clinic. I did it last year and I get a chance to teach um, underprivileged kids in the barrios of Cartagena and the surrounding cities of Cartagena um, football in Americano. And uh, I enjoy doing it. and I have a great time doing it. So uh, I get a chance to to take the gift that God has given me and, and to stretch it across the globe. Well, that is badass. So good job. You're a good man. We appreciate it. The people in the chat are going to appreciate it. Even the ones who get mad at you all the time. Damn it. Yeah, get it together, good. people. <laughs> all right. Well, this was presented. by. We didn't, talk, we didn't talk enough about Dak. I think we didn't talk enough about Dak. I think he needs more love. Oh, I think well, Dak needs from, more love. That's from you. I give him love every week. Dak's a badass. He just happened to play one of his best games ever on a giant stage against Tom Brady, who the Cowboys have never beat, on the road. Uh, and he dropped dimes to a wide receiver core that's full of meh and uh, Dalton Schultz and Dak Prescott's a badass. I don't know. I mean, um, if you had something more than that. You... No, I just, wanted to say, I, just, I just wanted him to get some love. Yeah, I guess I didn't spend enough time talking about had, uh, how badass he is. Great job. Hey, do it again. I dare you. Do it again. Uh, Thank you to David in the super chat. He said, just for what you're doing. Okay, I'll make sure I have to divide that one up. Ten for Jess and Joe. Here for Jeff. Uh, And remember, you have no idea what anyone is going through, so be cool to everyone. We love you. Goodbye. Eliminate the contingencies.